So right now what you're looking at is the 50mm f1.2 with the anamorphic adapter from Moment attached to the front. And as you just witnessed there, the autofocus does in fact work on this. And it shouldn't, I mean, it, it does. It's just not designed to be used this way. And you know I'm all for one in testing gear in ways that it's not meant to be used. Now it does make total sense that this would work because my distance from the camera lens isn't actually changing. If I was to go way back there, I mean, let's see. It's still gonna work. It'll focus on me, but the camera will, the camera lens will actually focus on me, but I'm gonna be out of focus because you have to focus twice with this technically in terms of the way that you're meant to use it. So you're actually meant to set the camera lens attached to the body to infinity, and then you just focus with the moment anamorphic adapter instead. Now what this lens is doing is it's giving you a 1.33 squeeze on any, any, We'll get to that in a bit. Any full frame Super 35 lens, and it is going to work better with Super 35 lenses. Hold that thought, we'll get back to that as I said. It's taking a 16 by nine video frame and turning into a two by 35 to one frame instead. You de-squeeze that in post pretty easily. There's a bunch of tutorials on how to do that out there. You do actually get the flares on this and they aren't any of those fake blue flares that numerous companies make adapters and lenses that create. This is how they look with a, I think I have a black satin three attached to the front here. Uh, and it does have a filter thread on the front of the anamorphic adapter, which is something most other adapters don't have as well. So if you want to attach an ND filter or diffusion, black satin, black pro mist, whatever it is you want to use, you can do that as well. I tried it out with my Helios 442 and it's very soft. This lens is already super soft. This has a ton of imperfections. This isn't a perfect copy. I'm sure there's some fungus growing in there and we can probably leave it in there. We don't want anything from The Last of Us happening. Very unique look to use it with this and get that cinematic, even more of a cinematic image out of a already beautiful lens. But it was very hard to focus with this and we'll get back to that in a bit. Now this is a massive, heavy, very well built piece of glass. Comes with step up rings in the box and I've got to say they're probably the highest quality step up rings I've ever seen in my life. They are solid, very, very nicely built and you get a 67, a 72, a 77, and an 82 in there to cover all your lenses. If you need to use your own, like I had to with the Helios here, this was a 49 filter thread on the front there, so you can use your own as well, and then use it with one of these if you needed to. So the actual thread that needs to go on the anamorphic adapter is a, a 67 there, so you may use step up or step down rings to get to whatever you need. So you screw this on the back of the adapter and then this goes onto the front of the lens like so. So this is a 67 mil thread on the back, the lens is a 72. One of the benefits with this anamorphic adapter is typically with a screw on anamorphic adapters, it doesn't align properly and if you screw it a little bit too far or not quite far enough and it's tight and you can't really go any further then everything is just kind of wonky and crooked and it doesn't look how it's meant to look. The nice thing with this adapter is there's a little button on there. So once it's fully screwed on and you have it as tight as you want it to go, you can click and hold the button and then get it to the correct orientation. So everything just looks properly straight, and not crooked and wonky and then it stretches or de-stretches nicely when you come to do it in post. You just align that with the front of the lens and you're set. Now in terms of the actual lenses, this is compatible with, if you're using Super 35, you got a lot more flexibility or crop mode. If you are using full frame, you have to go 50 mil or higher. Now this is just to do with the way that things work. If you put a wide lens on your camera body and then you attach this adapter to the front, you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna see the edges of the adapter and you're just gonna have this big vignette. It's not gonna be usable. So you gotta use 50 mil or higher. If you use super 35 or crop, you can go down to a 35 millimeter. So now we're actually at 50 mil without the anamorphic adapter on there. And that's that's it right there. It's a big old chunk of glass. Why aren't you focusing now? Oh, you can see my eye. Come on. No, it's not gonna happen. Uh, and I actually have noticed there that I'm now of exposed. So there's definitely something happening inside there. It would, that uh, would reduce the amount of light going into the lens. So be aware of that. Back to the anamorphic look for the rest of the video. Now, this image in itself looks very nice, very cinematic. I've set it up to do so. It looks super wide. We wanted to try out though out and about and see what kind of images we could get. And that's where I started running into, not issues, but 
things you should be aware of if you're looking at picking this up. I wanted to mimic a shot from The Dark Knight, Chris Nolan, and he has very smooth, very stable shots for most of his films. So I needed to mount the 50 mil F1.2 with the FX3 and the adapter, which is very heavy to a gimbal. And I quickly realized it just was not possible. You cannot do it. It's too heavy, too front heavy, even with counterweights on the back, not possible. So I ended up using the 50 mil F1.8, which I bought for like $150 US used. So the adapter is like four or five times the cost of the lens we were using. But that allowed me to have a much smaller, lighter setup and then balance that on the gimbal. Now I attached the Ronin focus motor to the lens here. We're having to turn this just way too much to have accurate control over the lens's focus. So with a gimbal setup like that, it's not gonna work. You're gonna need to use some form of external follow focus to manually focus it if you wanna attach this to a gimbal. That could be the nucleus system that will work fine or you can use the small rig one if you wanted to but then that's more weight on the gimbal. And this was already a super, super heavy setup. So bear that in mind, if you wanna use this with a gimbal, you're gonna oh, be limited yes. by what you can balance. And then you still need to have some form of focusing system on there as well. Focusing with the Ronin system, it's, you can't, it's not accurate enough, which did lead to some focus issues for us. Like, if you can follow like the same distance around the outside of this, yeah. I'm gonna try and go handheld and then just follow you. So, I think gimbal with um, just the, the nucleus would be good. Now I didn't want it to be super sharp anyway. You don't really want super sharp when it comes to like a real like filmy look. So I wasn't too too worried, but it hindered us. Now also know you are going to need some form of lens support system. So I have had this mounted and uh, rigged up with the FX6 here. You'll need something like this because it extends to like here and all that weight on the mount, the E-mount there. I mean, this is a metal mount, so it's okay. I did try it for a bit without because I didn't have one. I had to order one, but you'll need one of these to really make yourself feel comfortable knowing that that isn't putting too much stress on your lens mount. It adds this huge amount to the front there, which is now being supported by the lens mount there if you don't have one of these. So that is on an FX3. You definitely need to have some form of system like this on the FX3 to support this weight. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is a monitor to be able to de-squeeze the image so you can accurately see what is in focus when you're shooting it. Just using the back of the camera screen, if you have a camera that doesn't de-squeeze, I think the only cameras that potentially do would be Panasonic. Sony doesn't, Canon doesn't. So if you, you can't see the de-squeezed image, it's impossible to focus. Even with focus peak, and it's impossible is not the right word. It's, it's very, very hard and would it would take a lot to get you shot actually in focus. I actually use the Ninja 5 because it does have a de-squeeze option in there, but the problem with when you turn on the anamorphic mode, the, the de-squeeze, is that it shrinks that screen size down. So now you really can't see anything, even though it's de-squeezed, you really can't see anything again because it's now too small. So you're probably gonna wanna use a seven inch monitor to accurately see or easily see what is in focus. Now this is obviously dependent on if you're shooting wide open or not. So if you're at f1.2, it's obviously gonna be a lot harder than if you're at 5.6. You don't always need to have that bokeh in the background there. Look at most movies, you can actually see in movies what's in focus normally in the background. So don't think you have to use f1.8, but if you want to, it's gonna be harder than if you're using f5.6. If you're new to this, that's a really good thing for you to start doing now, instead of shooting everything f1.2 now and then realizing in two years that you were wrong and it's actually okay to shoot at f4. F5.6. But in general, this isn't a bad option for you if you're looking at getting that anamorphic look with the anamorphic flares, really cinematic vibe out of lenses you already have, out of your vintage glass, full frame glass if it's 50 mil or higher, super 35 glass if it's 35 mil or higher, not a bad option. I think that's all I've got. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.